Welcome back everyone, this is Brian. So in this video, we're going to dive deeper into Python 3 using UDP sockets. We've talked about TCP with their three-way handshake. So what is UDP? Well, UDP doesn't have concepts like connections and clients and servers. Think of UDP like as a room full of people and everyone's just shouting at the same time and you have to kind of select who you want to pay attention to. So UDP is User Datagram Protocol. Notice the first word, user. That means it's up to the user to determine the protocol. There is no three-way handshake or any fancy thing like that. So this is a communications protocol that's used for establishing low latency and loss tolerating communications. Now, what does this mean? Low latency means this is very fast, but it's also very dangerous because you can miss packets, drop packets. You're assuming whatever you're sending out is a lot like a message in a bottle. You really don't care if it gets there or not. You're just sending it out, and if somebody grabs it, they grab it. So the big thing here is this is used a lot in, well, lower level protocols and even embedded devices. Like think of like a, a weather thermometer. It may just be sitting there broadcasting out the weather via UDP on your wireless, but it doesn't really care if you're listening to the weather or not. It's just going to keep churning it out once a second. So let's dive in and take a look. As always, the first step is, you guessed it, import. So we are going to, in traditional fashion, just copy and paste. We are going to use logging, multiprocessing, threading, socket, sys, and time. I'm not sure if we're going to use all those, but we're going to figure it out. And logging, we're going to go ahead and do a basic config. Now, the main premise here is we're going to create two processes. And we want to, well, run one process as a broadcaster and one process as a listener. So one of them is going to be speaking and the other one's going to be listening to that. But they could both speak if they wanted to. Remember, with UDP, there really are no rules. It's up to the user to define what's going on here. All right, the bulk of this program is going to be in this little section here where we're gonna actually build up a socket. Now notice I'm not saying a client or a server or anything like that. We're just going to make a socket. And this is going to be run on a process, and each process is going to treat this a little bit differently. So let's go to say def make underscore socket. I want the IP to be localhost port, and I'm just going to pick a port. You could be super fancy and follow the last video where you could actually determine if a port's in use. But I'm going to say port 2045 by default. And sender equals false. Now, sender is really what we're going to be working with here because we want one of these to broadcast and one of them to listen to that broadcast. Think of it like a radio station and somebody listening to the radio. I'm going to go ahead and say proc equal multiprocessing. I want the current process name. That way we know what process is actually running this because we're going to have two processes and each one of them is going to run this function, except for one of them is going to say sender false and one of them is going to say sender true all right let's get some screen real estate there say logging info go ahead and format that and i want to say whatever the process is is now starting let's go ahead and get a socket so i'm going to say s equal socket dot socket and I want to say the address family is INET or IP version 4. And this is where you got to kind of pay attention a little bit here because this is how we actually build a UDP socket. So I'm going to say socket dot. And instead of sock stream, I want sock dgram or datagram. Again, if we scroll all the way up here, it is a user datagram protocol, not a stream of data. So it's just a chunk of data that's flying out on the wire. So sock dgram. Now I'm going to go ahead and say, if we are the sender, logging.info, and I'm just putting this out here. We don't really have to have any of this for it to really function. I want to know what we're doing in advance. So I'm going to say f, whoops, f, and I want to know the process. is starting to send.
And let's go ahead and grab this. And we're going to say binding to port. So the main thing here is if we are the sender, we're just going to start sending. However, if we want to actually listen to that conversation, we need to now bind to that address. And depending on your OS and a whole bunch of other factors, you may have a bad time if you try to do this multiple times. We're going to cover that a little bit more in depth in future videos, but I just wanted to throw that out there in case somebody tries to do like 15 different clients on the same bind. There might be a different way you have to do it. Again, we'll cover it. And we're going to say, make an address out of the IP and port. Go ahead and bind. We're going to go ahead and bind to that address. Now, what bind does here is it really says, go out to the network card and listen on that port for UDP packets. Doesn't really matter what those packets are. I just want to listen to them. Now, I'm going to say, with our socket, we want while true, and this is why we're doing multiprocessing because we're just going to do a blocking socket and we're just going to do an infinite loop. And I want to say if we are the sender, again, screen real estate is our buddy here. Get this. Sending, just so we can see what's going on under the hood. And I want to send to, and there's a whole bunch of different options, but for this one, we're just going to send to. You may get super excited and see send file. Um, yeah, UDP is really not the best protocol for doing that. You definitely can, but it's really not the best. TCP is a better option for sending files. We want to say hello, UDP, and that's really all we're going to send. And we're going to go ahead and send that on the IP and port. Now I'm going to say time dot sleep, and we're going to go ahead and sleep for one second. Else we're going to say data and the address, and we're going to go ahead and receive from. And we've covered this in the TCP video. Very very simple. We're just going to say we want an upper limit to how much data we can actually receive. In this case, one zero two four bytes. We're not even remotely sending that. We're just sending this right here. But you got to have that out there just to be safe. And then let's go ahead and say time.sleep. Actually, don't need time sleep. What was I thinking? There we go. Logging info. And I want the protocol from. You definitely could sleep if you wanted to, but it would probably not be good. From the address. There we go. And then we want to know what data we had here. All right, lots of typing. Any misspellings barred? Let's go ahead and run this. Make sure we don't have any little gremlins. Cool. Doesn't look like I really destroyed anything too much. But the main takeaway here is we're going to make a socket, which is going to run in a process. It's going to be on the local host on the default port of 2045. And you can define the IP and the port. And we're going to be able to determine if we're sending or listening. And we're doing that on IP version 4 using a UDP socket. And then from there, we're saying, if we are the sender, we're going to go ahead and send once a second, hello UDP, to that IP and port. However, if we're listening, we're going to go ahead and receive. And this is blocking, so it's going to sit there and block the entire time. And then once it's received some data and unblocks, it's going to say, Logging info, the process from address equals whatever the data was. Okay, my favorite part here. Let's see this in action. So we're going to take this make socket and put it into a process and then turn it into a broadcaster and then do the same thing on a listener. So let's go ahead and set up our main function here. And let's get some some area of the screen so we can actually see me type all this out. And I want to say broad, oh, if I could actually spell it, broadcaster. And I want the multiprocessing dot process. We've done this before. If you haven't watched the video, go back in the playlist and watch the multiprocessing videos I did. 
we're going to say the target is going to be that make socket function. Now we want some keyword args. It's not as cool as the word args. I like saying args, but anyways, we're going to say sender is going to be true. And then from here, we're going to say, yes, this is a daemon, which means it's going to shut down when our application shuts down. And let's go ahead and set the name to broadcaster. Ooh, that is very long. All right, so we're going to grab that, do the old copy and paste action here. That way we don't have to retype all that nonsense and say listener. Go ahead and down here. Don't really need to set this because we have that default, but I'm going to set it anyways, just to limit any confusion. So now we have a broadcaster and a listener. Notice how both of these are going to be on the local host on the same port. So both of them are using the same port, one's talking, one's listening. I'm going to go ahead and take our broadcaster. Let's go ahead and start that process. Now I'm going to take our listener. And let's go ahead and start that process. So now we've got multiple processes running. Now I want our main process or our main thread here to actually just kind of sit in the background. And then after five seconds, I want to shut this whole thing down. So I'm going to say time. Actually, let's go timer. Probably be vastly more helpful. I'm going to say threading. Timer. And in five seconds, I want to do a sys.exit. And I want to say we are exiting normally. That way nobody panics. Now let's just go ahead and start that. Now, assuming I typed everything correct, this will just work fine. So let's get some screen there and let's run this. Uh-oh, we had a boo-boo. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, da 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 In make socket. What is going on here? Run self, so file, blah, 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 line 40, in socket, send to address. Local variable address, a reference before assignment. Ooh. I wonder if anybody watching caught that while I was typing it. So what it's saying here is, scroll through this. On line 40, this guy right here, address reference before assignment. Interesting, it's up there, so easy fix. There we go. Go and clear that. All right, now it's working. So you can see we broadcaster sending, the listener's listening, and the listener's getting that information, and then it shuts everything down after five seconds. So minus the little typo that I had up there, everything is working. The main concern here is that we're using UDP. You notice the broadcaster and the listener, actually I had those backwards, the broadcaster and the listener have no idea the other exists. The broadcaster is just going to send data out, doesn't even care if anybody's listening. And the listener is going to say, hey, is there anybody out there? If so, tell me, what am I listening for? And that's gonna say, boop, this is the data. So UDP, I'm not a big fan of UDP. We're not going to really do a lot of elaborate deep diving. We're gonna cover it a little bit more in depth later on, but I want you to understand what it is because it is the counterpart to TCP. Remember, TCP has that three-way handshake and it guarantees a connection and it guarantees the data sent. Otherwise, you get a socket error of some kind. Where UDP, what we're working with in this video, just literally throws it out into the abyss. And if you wanna to listen to it, it's up to you to figure out how to get it. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find the source code out on github.com. If you need additional help, myself and thousands of other developers are hanging out in the Void Realms Facebook group. This is a large group with lots of developers and we talk about everything technology related, not just the technology that you just watched. And if you want official training, I do develop courses out on udemy.com. This is official classroom style training. If you go out there and the course you're looking for is just simply not there, drop me a note. I'm either working on it or I will actually develop it. I will put a link down below for all three of those. And as always, help me help you. Smash that like and subscribe button. 
The more popular these videos become, the more I'll create and publish out on YouTube. Thank you for watching.